Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Due to the fragile nature of optical fibers, it is considered poor cabling practice to connect fiber links directly into equipment. Properly designed fiber links should include patch panels wherever possible to protect these optical fibers from damage resulting from unnecessary handling. Ruggedized cables, called patch cables, provide the final connection between installed fiber patch panels and any equipment attached to them. This video will cover the basics of patch cables as they relate to the topic of testing, starting with demystifying some common confusion about patch cables. Patch cables are required for testing. There is no getting around this. A link cannot be adequately tested without patch cables for a couple of key reasons. First, test equipment must be zeroed out before testing a fiber link, a process called setting a reference. Since test equipment cannot be connected to the link during the zeroing procedure, the only way to properly set a reference is by connecting the test equipment together with patch cables. Second, remember that properly designed links use patch panels on the ends of the fiber link. So when testing the fiber link, the patch panels must also be included in the test. How else would the testers be able to connect into the patch panels if it weren't for patch cables? There is nothing particularly special about patch cables used for testing. Technically speaking, a patch cable is a patch cable no matter what it is being used for. Patch cables used for connecting communications equipment to a link, such as hubs, switches, routers, and network cards, are equally suited for connecting test equipment to a link. Some companies manufacture reference grade patch cables, which typically means that the cable manufacturer has done additional testing on the cable and or used special materials, perhaps to make the connector a bit more durable to withstand the rigors of testing. These cables are marketed to the installer crowd as being better quality than the standard patch cables and as a result cost more. But that doesn't mean that a fiber link must be tested with reference grade patch cables. Standard patch cables work just as well because setting a reference effectively zeroes out any imperfections the cable might have. Even so, patch cables used for testing should always be checked before each testing day to make sure that they are okay to use. Patch cables that don't check out might have additional problems that zeroing cannot overcome. On a related note, there's nothing preventing anyone from using high quality reference grade patch cables to connect active equipment to the fiber link. Here we see a patch panel with LC connectors. As a fiber technician, you may be asked to test this fiber link, but your light source might have an SC connector on it, like this one. As you probably know, you just grab an SC to LC patch cable and go on with your testing, like this. Take an LC patch cable for your, for your light source, and then you'd have an LC connector to go into the patch panel, just like that. This diagram illustrates that there is no reason why patch panel connector ports have to match test equipment connector ports. The key thing for technicians to understand is that patch cables all have the same basic internal construction, which includes the optical fiber, buffer, protective aramid yarn, and outer protective materials as you can see here. Aside from fiber type and core size, the only thing that differentiates one patch cable from another are the connector styles on the ends of the patch cables. Take these single mode patch cables for example. They're all the same except for the different connector configurations. Like this one. We have SC uh, flat to SC angled. We have SC to FC. We have ST to ST. We have SC to SC. And you get the idea. So, when selecting the right cables for the test, connector types are just one aspect to consider. Technicians must also use patch cables that match the fiber type and core size of the link. Otherwise, core size mismatch occurs. Core size mismatch is caused by the core of one optical fiber having a different core size than the optical fiber it is connecting to. Obviously, when coupling a larger core to a smaller core, a significant amount of loss occurs. On the order of 20 to 30 dB when coupling multimode to single mode, and around 3 dB when coupling 62.5 micron multimode to 50 micron multimode. For your information, 3 dB is enough to fail most standards-based optical link budgets. 
Going the other direction, we see that coupling a smaller core to a larger core results in inaccurate and imprecise test results due to underfilling the larger core. With the advent of 10 gigabit networks, transceiver companies started using new high-speed vertical cavity surface emitting laser transmitters called VIXELs because VIXELs are better at transmitting more bits in a shorter amount of time than traditional LED sources. Neither OM1 nor OM2 multimode fibers could fully support the distance requirements for 10 gigabit transmission, so fiber manufacturers began to develop laser-optimized 50 micron multimode fibers to take advantage of VIXEL transmission. These fibers, which today we know as OM3 and OM4, have an enhanced graded index profile that decreases bit spreading due to modal dispersion, thus increasing bandwidth. So how does this affect the selection of patch cables used for testing? The answer can be found by looking more closely at the difference between transmitters used for data communications and transmitters used for testing. Communications transmitters, such as SFPs, transmit 0 and 1 bits by turning the light off and on. The faster and more precisely this can be done, such as with pixels, the more bits can be transmitted in a certain period of time. On the other hand, light sources used for testing transmit a continuous wave signal, which means the light is always on and at a consistent power level. In other words, continuous wave sources used for testing do not transmit bits and thus no bit spreading occurs during an insertion loss test. Thus, any 50 micron core patch cable could be used to measure the insertion loss of any 50 micron laser optimized multimode fiber link because the nature of a fiber's graded index profile has no bearing on the success or failure of the test. Sometimes patch cables alone are insufficient for testing fibers. Technicians may need to modify their test procedure by either using different methods for setting references or by using special types of cables. In addition, always keep in mind that minimizing uncertainty of optical loss measurements wherever possible is very important. This section will cover some of the concepts and accessories a technician may encounter while testing. Up to this point, we have focused on testing properly designed fiber links, in other words, with patch panels on both ends of the fiber link. However, there are times when a technician will run into a link where only one end has a patch panel, or even no patch panels, which we typically call home run. A reference would still need to be set, but the technician would have to adjust the reference method to accommodate the link configuration. A reference method simply refers to the number of patch cables used during the zeroing process. There are three common reference methods, one jumper, two jumper, and three jumper. Obviously, when using two and three jumper methods, additional accessories called mating sleeves, also known as bulkheads, adapters, or couplers, will be required to connect the multiple cables together. Technicians should always use the one jumper method unless it is impossible to do so. This is because including mating sleeves into the zeroing process increases the uncertainty of the measurement. By eliminating mating sleeves altogether with the one jumper method, measurement uncertainty is minimized. Here are some diagrams showing the three different link types. Multimode fibers contain hundreds of possible paths called modes that carry optical signals from one end of the fiber to the other. Low order modes are those modes that tend to travel near the center of the fiber core and remain in the core for the whole length of the fiber. High order modes, on the other hand, tend to travel near the core to cladding boundary and will be lost in the cladding before reaching the far end of the fiber. To decrease uncertainty, high order modes should not be included in the optical reference. Unfortunately, a 1 meter reference cable is too short to remove high order modes on its own. This is why cabling standards typically mandate that multimode reference cables be carefully wrapped around a smooth, even cylinder called a mandrel. By wrapping the reference cable this way, high order modes are quickly forced into the cladding, leaving only lower order modes. Aside from violation of the cabling standard test procedure, 
the practical consequence of not using a mandrel is that both higher order modes and low order modes would contribute to the loss measurement when the standard only considers loss of low order modes. Consequently, the amount of loss would be overstated, potentially resulting in a false fail test result, even if the fiber link is perfectly fine. Let's consider this example. Let's assume the following. A standards-based link budget of 2 dB, an actual end-to-end -end link loss of 1.7 dB, and a typical loss contributed by higher order modes as 0.5 dB. Now, using a mandrel, the test equipment measures 1.7 dB and displays a past test result. The technician continues on to the next fiber. Without a mandrel, the test equipment measures 2.2 dB, 0.5 dB of which was contributed by higher order modes not removed by the mandrel and displays a failed test result. Now, the technician stops what they're doing to troubleshoot a problem that doesn't exist. In this case, the technician would be wasting considerable time and effort cleaning, inspecting, re-terminating, retesting in vain, just because the proper test procedure was not followed from the start. Encircled flux, or EF, is a recent evolution in standards-based multimode fiber testing developed as an attempt to further decrease uncertainty between optical loss measurements taken with different manufacturers' test equipment or with the same test equipment but at a different time. Rather than modifying a standard multimode patch cable like mandrel wrapping, encircled flux testing requires a special multimode reference cable called a mode controller that ensures light exiting any EF-compliant mode controller reference cable always has a consistent modal pattern no matter which manufacturer's multimode light source was used. EF compliant mode controller cables are not required for testing in every situation. The use of EF compliant test cables is typically focused only on testing OM3 and OM4 multimode fiber networks running at 10 gigabit or greater, and usually only when a cabling standard specifies it. Technicians should consult customer documents or applicable cabling standards to verify if EF compliant testing is required. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. For more information about additional instructional videos or OWL fiber optic test equipment in general, please visit OWL's website at owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.